47 minutes ago, something happened that I never expected to witness in my lifetime through iAtlas just transmitted again. But this signal wasn't random. It wasn't scattered across the cosmos like the first one. This one was focused, concentrated, aimed directly at our planet and the data pattern inside it. Scientists are refusing to discuss it publicly, but I've seen the preliminary analysis and what they found changes everything we thought we knew about this interstellar visitor. Before I reveal what was encoded in that transmission, you need to understand why this discovery has researchers across three continents working through the night. Because this isn't just about a signal anymore. This is about who or what sent it. Let me take you inside the moment this happened. It's 2.23 a.m. at the Arecibo Successor Facility in Green Bank, West Virginia. The night is quiet. Radio telescopes scan the heavens in their endless search for cosmic whispers. Suddenly, an alert triggers on monitor 7. The operator assumes it's interference. Maybe a satellite passing overhead. Maybe atmospheric noise from a distant thunderstorm. Then monitor 12 lights up. Same signature, same frequency, same impossible source. Within 90 seconds, confirmation arrives from the Parkes Observatory in Australia. Then from the FAST telescope in China. Then from the European Space Agency's Deep Space Network. Four independent facilities, four separate continents, all detecting the exact same transmission at the exact same moment. All tracing it back to one source, 3i Atlas. But here's what made the operators freeze at their stations. The signal wasn't omnidirectional. It wasn't broadcasting in all directions like a lighthouse beam. It was focused, concentrated into a narrow cone of electromagnetic energy pointed at one specific location in space. Earth, now I need you to understand why directional transmission matters so much. When natural objects emit radio waves, they do so randomly. Pulsars spin and sweep their beams across the sky like cosmic searchlights. Magnetars burst with energy in all directions. Even artificial satellites broadcast omnidirectionally to maximize coverage. Aiming a signal requires intention. You need to know where your target is. You need to calculate the precise angle. You need to focus your transmission energy into a specific vector rather than wasting it across the entire sky. 3i Atlas somehow knew exactly where Earth was positioned in its orbit around the sun. It calculated the correct trajectory, and it fired a directed signal straight at us. This isn't the behavior of a tumbling rock. This isn't outgassing or plasma discharge or any natural phenomenon we've ever documented. This is targeting. And the question nobody wants to ask out loud is simple, why us, why now? To understand what makes this second signal so disturbing, we need to revisit what happened with the first transmission. Three weeks ago, observatories detected an electromagnetic pulse emanating from 3i Atlas. That signal lasted 0.73 seconds. It repeated twice with intervals of 11.2 seconds between bursts. Researchers initially dismissed it as instrument error or natural plasma interaction with the solar wind. But analysis revealed structure within the noise mathematical patterns that shouldn't exist in random emissions, prime number sequences embedded in the frequency modulation, deliberate organization that defied natural explanation. Still, skeptics argued it could be coincidence. Pattern recognition is what humans do. We see faces in clouds and messages in static. Perhaps we were projecting meaning onto meaningless data. The second signal destroyed that argument completely because this transmission wasn't ambiguous. It wasn't open to interpretation. It contained something that no natural process could produce. Hold that thought, because what I'm about to tell you will fundamentally alter how you see this entire situation. Let me tell you exactly what was inside that signal. When researchers at MIT's Haystack Observatory ran the transmission through spectrographic analysis, they discovered something that made senior scientists demand the data be rechecked. Then rechecked again, then classified. The signal contained a frequency sweep, a progression of electromagnetic tones that climbed from 1.42 gigahertz to 1.67 gigahertz over exactly 21 seconds. Why does that matter? Because 1.42 gigahertz is the hydrogen line, the most fundamental frequency in radio astronomy, the natural emission of hydrogen atoms. Every civilization searching for extraterrestrial intelligence monitors this frequency because hydrogen is the most abundant element in the universe. It's the universal calling card. And 1.67 gigahertz, that's the hydroxyl line. The emission frequency of OH molecules combine hydrogen and hydroxyl and you get water. The basis of all known life, the sweep from hydrogen to hydroxyl covers what astronomers call the water hole. The quiet zone in the electromagnetic spectrum where intelligent civilizations would most likely transmit because interference is minimal. 3i Atlas didn't just send a random burst of static, it sent a message using the exact frequency range that any technologically advanced species would recognize as intentional communication. It spoke in the universal language of physics itself. But wait, that's not even the most disturbing part. Embedded within that frequency sweep was a modulation pattern. Subtle variations in amplitude that formed a secondary layer of information riding on top of the primary transmission. When researchers extracted and analyzed this embedded signal, they found binary code. 
ones and zeros, the simplest possible encoding system, the mathematical foundation that any intelligent species would understand regardless of biology or culture. The binary sequence was short, only 1,679 bits. But that number itself carries profound significance. 1,679 is a semi-prime, the product of two prime numbers, 23 and 73. In 1974, when humanity sent the famous Arecibo message into space, we chose exactly 1,679 bits because that length can only be arranged into a rectangle of 23 rows and 73 columns, or 73 rows and 23 columns. The prime factorization ensures the receiving civilization would know how to decode it. Three Ash Atlas sent a message with the exact same mathematical structure we used 49 years ago. Coincidence? The probability approaches zero. This object either intercepted our transmission and is responding in kind, or it already knew how we communicate before it ever entered our solar system. Both possibilities are terrifying. Now comes the question everyone is asking. What did the binary actually say? I need to be careful here. Some of this information has been restricted by agencies I cannot name, but certain details have leaked through academic channels and I can share what's already circulating among researchers. The decoded binary forms a grid. When arranged into the 2373 rectangle, patterns emerge. At the top, a representation of the hydrogen atom, one proton, one electron, the building block of the universe. Below that, a sequence showing the double helix structure of DNA, not human DNA specifically, but the fundamental spiral that encodes genetic information in carbon-based life. And at the bottom of the grid, this is where researchers went silent. The diagram, circles arranged in a specific pattern, a large circle at the center, smaller circles orbiting around it at varying distances, our solar system. And one of those orbital circles, the third one from the center, has a marking next to it, a symbol that appears nowhere else in the transmission. Earth, identified, marked, highlighted. Here's what makes this even more unsettling. 3i Atlas is currently 1.8 astronomical units from Earth. At that distance, radio signals take approximately 15 minutes to reach us. The second transmission was detected at 2.23 a.m. Eastern Time. Working backward, that means 3i Atlas initiated the signal at roughly 2.08 a.m. our time. At 2.08 a.m. Eastern, Earth was in a very specific position relative to 3i Atlas. Our planet had just rotated the North American continent into direct line of sight with the object. In other words, 3i Atlas waited until the part of Earth with the most advanced radio telescope infrastructure was facing it before transmitting. It wasn't just aiming at Earth. It was aiming at our listening stations. It knew where our ears were pointed. Let me put this in perspective that might shake you. In 1977, the Big Ear Radio Telescope in Ohio detected what became known as the Wow signal, a powerful narrowband transmission from the direction of the constellation Sagittarius that lasted 72 seconds. For decades, it remained the strongest candidate for extraterrestrial communication ever recorded. We never found its source. We never detected it again. It remains unexplained to this day. The signal from 3i Atlas is stronger, more structured, more clearly directed. And most importantly, we know exactly where it came from. We can see the source with our telescopes. We can track its trajectory. We can calculate its orbit. We can predict where it will be tomorrow and next week and next month. For the first time in human history, we have a potential extraterrestrial transmission with a confirmed physical source moving through our solar system. And that source is getting closer. Behind closed doors, a fierce debate is raging among the world's scientific institutions. Should we respond? One faction argues that silence is the only safe option. We don't know the intentions of whatever sent this message. We don't know if responding would reveal information about our civilization that could be used against us. The smart move is to observe quietly and learn as much as possible before making our presence unambiguously known. The opposing faction argues that it's already too late for silence. The signal was directed at Earth. Whatever sent it already knows we're here, already knows our position, perhaps already knows far more about us than we realize. Refusing to respond accomplishes nothing except appearing either afraid or primitive. A third faction, smaller but growing, argues something even more controversial. They believe we should attempt to transmit our own directed signal at 3i Atlas. Establish contact, open dialogue, take the first active step toward interstellar communication. As of now, no consensus has emerged. And while scientists debate, 3i Atlas continues its journey through our solar system, getting closer every hour. Remember the observation from Gemini Observatory, the discovery that 3i Atlas may not be traveling alone? Those companion objects have become significantly more relevant after this second transmission. 
researchers re-examined the formation pattern of the smaller bodies traveling alongside the main nucleus. They discovered something that hadn't been noticed before. The companions aren't randomly distributed. They're arranged in a geometric pattern, a shape that when viewed from Earth's current position forms a recognizable structure. An arrow pointing forward along 3i Atlas's trajectory, or perhaps more accurately, pointing at its destination. Some analysts believe these companion objects aren't debris at all. They might be relay stations, signal amplifiers, components of a communication network far more sophisticated than anything we've built. If true, the transmission we receive may have been boosted and focused by multiple units working in coordination, a distributed antenna array spanning thousands of kilometers of space. That level of engineering suggests capabilities we cannot match, cannot comprehend, can barely imagine. I've spent 40 years in theoretical physics. I've consulted with agencies. I've reviewed classified documents during my work on propulsion systems. I know how information gets controlled when institutions decide the public isn't ready. What's happening with 3i Atlas fits a pattern I've seen before. Initial data gets released to generate scientific interest and funding. Strange observations get reported through normal channels. Peer review proceeds as expected. Then something changes. Something gets discovered that triggers a different protocol. Suddenly data becomes restricted. Access gets limited. Researchers find themselves signing non-disclosure agreements they've never encountered before. That shift happened approximately 10 days ago with 3i Atlas research. I cannot tell you specifically what triggered it. I don't have that clearance anymore. But I can tell you that the scientific community's behavior changed dramatically right around when the second signal was detected. Papers that were scheduled for publication have been delayed indefinitely. Conference presentations have been canceled. Graduate students have been reassigned to different projects. Something in that transmission scared people with the authority to control information flow. We're now less than two weeks from perihelion. Between October 29th and 31st, 3i Atlas will reach its closest approach to our sun. Maximum solar radiation, maximum thermal stress, maximum gravitational influence. What happens during perihelion will answer questions we've been asking since July. If 3i Atlas fragments like a natural comet, then perhaps we've been overthinking this. Perhaps the signals were extraordinary coincidence combined with human pattern recognition. Perhaps we wanted to see meaning so badly that we manufactured it from noise. But if 3i Atlas survives intact, if it maintains structural integrity through conditions that would destroy any normal comet, if it transmits again during its closest solar approach, then the comfortable explanations evaporate completely, and we're left with a truth that humanity may not be prepared to accept. Three moments in history are converging right now. 1974, humanity sends the Arecibo message. Our first deliberate attempt to communicate with extraterrestrial intelligence, 1,679 bits of binary encoded information broadcast toward the globular cluster M13. A message in a bottle thrown into the cosmic ocean. 2017, Oumuamua enters our solar system. The first confirmed interstellar visitor. Strange shape, mysterious acceleration. We weren't ready. It vanished before we could study it properly. 2025, 3i Atlas arrives. Sending signals with the exact mathematical structure of our Arecibo transmission. Aiming those signals directly at Earth. Carrying companions in geometric formation. 51 years between our message and this response. The light travel time to M13 and back is approximately 50,000 years. So this isn't a reply to Arecibo. This is something else. Something that was already watching, already listening, already waiting for us to become interesting enough to contact. Think about what this means for humanity's understanding of our place in the cosmos. For centuries, we've asked whether we're alone. We've built telescopes to search for signals. We've sent probes to explore neighboring worlds. We've encoded messages and golden records attached to spacecraft heading beyond our solar system. We were the seekers, the curious ones, the species reaching out into the darkness, hoping someone might answer. What if that framework was wrong? What if we were never the seekers? What if we've always been the sought? What if civilizations far older and more advanced than ours have been monitoring young species throughout the galaxy, watching for the moment when developing intelligences demonstrate certain capabilities, waiting for us to reach a threshold that triggers contact. We invented radio in the early 20th century. Within decades, our electromagnetic signature began leaking into space. Television broadcasts, radar systems, communication networks. For nearly 100 years, Earth has been screaming its presence into the void. Perhaps 3i Atlas isn't a random visitor. Perhaps it's a response to that scream. We announced ourselves to the universe. Now the universe is announcing itself to us. Not everyone interprets the signal optimistically. A minority of researchers have proposed a darker reading of the transmission content. They point to the DNA representation 
and the solar system diagram, not as greetings, but as assessments. What if the signal isn't saying hello? What if it's saying we found you? The marked Earth on the orbital diagram could be identification, or it could be targeting. The genetic information could represent curiosity about carbon-based life, or it could represent cataloging. We're projecting our hopes onto ambiguous data. We want this to be a friendly greeting because the alternative is too frightening to contemplate. But consider this. When European explorers reached the Americas, they carried diseases that wiped out 90% of indigenous populations, not through malice, simply through contact. What microscopic dangers might an object from another star system carry? What forms of contamination could we face that our immune systems have never encountered? What if the greatest threat from 3i Atlas isn't its intentions, but simply its existence in our neighborhood? Mark this date, December 19th, 2025. That's when 3i Atlas will pass within 167 million miles of Earth during its outbound trajectory, closer than any confirmed interstellar object has ever approached our planet. Close enough for amateur telescopes to track it across the sky. Close enough for detailed spectroscopic analysis of its surface composition. Close enough that if it transmits again, the signal will arrive with unprecedented strength and clarity. Scientists have already reserved observation time at every major facility. Contingency protocols have been established for various scenarios. Emergency communication channels have been tested between international agencies. The world's most powerful instruments will be watching, listening, recording everything. Whatever 3i Atlas does next, we will document it in detail never before possible for an interstellar visitor. I've spent my career exploring the boundaries of physics, string theory, parallel universes, the fundamental nature of space and time, ideas that seem like science fiction when I was a student, but prove mathematically consistent with the deepest structures of reality. 3i Atlas represents something different, something that transcends even my most ambitious theoretical frameworks, because this isn't abstract mathematics or thought experiments. This is physical evidence, observable, measurable, real, in my 40 years of research, I've always believed that humanity would eventually detect signs of extraterrestrial intelligence. The universe is too vast, too old, too filled with potentially habitable worlds for us to be alone. Statistically, other civilizations must exist. But believing something intellectually and confronting it directly are different experiences entirely. What I feel now is an excitement. It's something closer to awe mixed with genuine uncertainty about what comes next. So here's where we stand. An object from beyond our solar system has transmitted a directed signal at Earth. That signal contains mathematical structures we recognize. Binary encoding, prime number factorization, frequency ranges associated with intelligent communication, diagrams that appear to reference our genetic structure and our planetary position, it traveled through interstellar space for potentially thousands of years. It entered our solar system at velocities we cannot match. It survived conditions that would destroy natural objects that may be traveling with companion units in geometric formation. And it's still approaching. Every day brings 3i Atlas closer to perihelion. Every day brings new observations that deepen the mystery. Every day brings humanity closer to a moment of revelation or reckoning. The signal was directed at Earth, at us, at this moment in our history. We can choose to ignore it, to rationalize it away as coincidence and noise and wishful thinking, to retreat into comfortable assumptions about being alone in a quiet cosmos. Or we can accept that something extraordinary is happening, that the universe just reached out and touched our civilization, that our place in the cosmic order may be fundamentally different than we ever imagined. The choice is ours, but the signal has already been sent. Whatever happens next, we cannot unsee what we've seen. We cannot unknow what we've learned. We cannot return to the innocence of believing we were alone. 3 I Atlas is still out there, still moving, still watching. And now we know with certainty that it sees us too. Subscribe now to follow 3 I Atlas through Perihelion and beyond. Share your interpretation of the signal in the comments below, because in the coming weeks, Humanity may receive answers to the oldest question we've ever asked. We are not alone, and now we have proof.